Okay, so hi everyone, my name is Martino. Um, today we'll be talking about a specific gene, SCN9A, and this gene has been known to be a large role player in how me and you feel pain a little bit differently. So today we're gonna be exploring this gene and how we all feel pain a little bit differently. Okay. okay, so before we get into any content, I want to explain a little bit of background information because I know I myself didn't know a lot of this bio content just even last year, so I feel like sharing would help with the understanding, with future understanding. So what exactly are genes? Um, genes are made up of our DNA, and some genes act as genes act as instructions to make molecules called proteins, and these proteins are kind of instructions, and they are the reason behind how we are, why we are, and how we function differently. So this process is ultimately known as the central dogma. So as you can see in this image right here, DNA goes from, it goes from DNA, transcripted to RNA, and then finally, the final product is a protein. So through replication, DNA is copied, and then it's translated into mRNA. This mRNA acts as instructions to code for different proteins. So, all right, next. Further information, we are gonna be talking a whole lot about SNPs today, uh, more specifically known as single nucleotide polymorphisms. So basically, a SNP is a germline mutation, so it's a, SNPs are common variants that we all have within our genetics. So our, our, um, it's made up of different nucleotides, so there's a sequence A, G, C, and T. So within a SNP, one of these nucleotides is altered, maybe um, is altered any, any single nucleotide, and it creates a variation within our gene. So uh, basically it's a mutation, a mutation within our genet genetics. So there are many different types of mutations that occur within our genetics, within our gene sequences, but today we'll be focusing on one specific mutation, type of mutation, called a missense mutation. So if you can see right here, these letters are codons that uh, code for proteins. So in this codon sequence right here, GUA, it codes for the protein valine. While in this one, you can see how the A is changed into a G. Now this is a mutation, but it has no effect or alteration on our gene because ultimately it codes for the same exact protein. However, the missense mutations that I have focused on throughout my presentation are the ones that alter a nucleotide and then therefore alter the protein. So here, same as before, just one letter is changed. However, this one letter changing has coded for a brand new protein. So this is these are missense mutations, and this is what we'll be focusing on for the rest of this research. Okay, next. So introduction to my research. Um, as I stated before, genetics, they vary very differently from person to person, and SNPs that we mentioned before are super normal and occur um, many times throughout our genetic, genetic sequences. So if you can see right here, some statistics. There are, um, there's one that occurs almost every 1,000 nucleotides, and that equals about four to five million SNPs in at least one person. So um, you can see how we're all very susceptible to different variations within our genetics. So that just leaves us all very, very different. So uh, like I said before, I'm going to be talking about how we all deal with pain differently. So certain regions of our brain, as you can see here, are um, key role players in how we deal with pain. So uh, you can see here, the right here, the thalamus. This is one big role player in how we feel pain differently and how, it, how we deal with perception and tolerance as individuals. Sorry, okay. So as I said before, I'm gonna be talking specifically, my research is all around this gene right here, the SCN9A gene. So this specific gene, it encodes for a specific channel. It's called the NAV 1.7 channel. So this is a channel, and it's a sodium ion channel. So it lets sodium ions in um, through the channel, the channel right here. I'll show you right here. So sodium ions come in through and out, in and out. So here there are nerve endings that kind of change the voltage and therefore change how we feel pain differently. So um, Next, we'll talk about 
how the rate of how sodium ions come in through those, that channel affects how we feel pain. So generally the understanding is that lower sodium ion flowing, flowing through the channel, lower sodium ion activity causes loss of function mutation. So when there's a loss of function mutation, it um, kind of causes us to be insensitive to pain. So we are a lot more tolerant. So if you have a loss of function mutation, you don't feel pain, ultimately. However, if you have a high activity of sodium ions flowing in and out through your channel, through your now 1.7 channel, then you are hypersensitive to pain. So this is kind of just a quick explanation of this specific channel. Next. Okay, so now I'll explain the objectives and the methods that I took throughout my research. So um, this channel is actually very um, targeted right now. So there have been lar uh, there have been pain conditions that have been mapped on this gene. You can see before. I'll take me back. You can see the little circles here and here and here. These are different mutations or different um, different mutations that cause extreme pain disorders that have already been mapped on this uh, gene. But however, the genes that we will be talking about are um, the smaller SNPs that are smaller differences and contribute to why we may potentially feel pain a little bit differently. Um, we might not all be suffering from any known pain disorders, but still there is a variation in how we react to pain, how we deal with pain, and how we um, how sensitive we are. Okay, so this is one table for my data. You can see here, these are 10 different SNPs that I um, explored throughout my research. These aren't just any random SNPs throughout our genetic sequence. These are missense mutations that we talked before, and these are the most frequently occurring ones in the general population. So you can see here, first one is common in about almost 15% of the global population, and so on and so forth. And these are the changes in their amino acid synthesis. So these are the top 10 and most frequently occurring SNPs within the SCN9A gene. Okay, next. Now this is the, this is the entire sequence for the SCN9A gene. You can see it's very long, but highlighted in blue, I have the same SNPs as before, just highlighted in this specific sequence. Okay, so this is another image of the NAV 1.7 channel. You can see there are different domains for this channel. There's one through four. And here in the circles, you can see I have mapped the different SNPs that I had in our chart before. Here they are mapped throughout the um, channel. You can see how there aren't any maps in this first domain. And in this first domain, it contains the VSD, which is the voltage sensing domain. So it senses how much ions are coming in through that um, channel. And this is the pore module. Uh, this PM stands for pore module. So from the fact that we have no uh, SNPs mapped to this specific domain, it tells us that there aren't that this very uh, domain is very tolerant to, uh, it's not tolerant at all to evolutionary change, so it is harder for a mutation to occur in this section right here. So here they are numbered the SNPs, and let's continue. Okay, so here are some statistics for the SNPs that I have been talking about. So these are SNPs 1, 2, and 3, the top three most frequently occurring in the SCN9A gene. Here, I, um, with, there's a study called 1000 Genomes, and it works to kind of see the, ver the frequency and um, in different ethnicities of these SNPs. So you can see in the SNP, number one has about 15%, but the subgroup of the American subgroup has almost 20% of the entire population that is carrying the specific SNP. And same as the next one. The next one has a global uh, frequency about 6.5, but the American subgroup has 26.2% of this population carrying this variant. And for the final one, number three, this one has a global uh, frequency is about 0.6%, but the South Asian subgroup has the highest frequency of this SNP. 
Okay, so uh, as we before we talked about this specific um, SNP, and we'll explore it more with these three D structures that I have right here. Okay, so this is kind of a three D structure that I've found on I found off the PDB uh, PDB website, and here you can see uh, the entire structure of the SCN9 A gene here and here. Um, if we can click it, I think it should play the video and it'll show you a close-up of that specific S uh, SNP that I showed you all before in the previous slide. Should zoom in and should be right there highlighted in pink and pointed to it with the arrow right here in the image captures. Okay. So these, um, this is a structure that shows the amino acid 802 or the SNP previously that I showed, number three. And this, these two are the same, and these two are the same. This one shows the inactivated uh, channel, and this one shows the activated channel. So as you can see within the last sentence, these structures are mapped to a Peruvian green tarantula, so protoxin 2, uh, it's also called. You can see how they're mapped, the straggly lines around. That's the tarantula toxin that this structure has been mapped to, to show us these beautiful structures. Okay, so to conclude my research, main conclusions. Uh, gene analysis, it's very important and, you know, it's ever-growing, this field, how important it is to do research and to explore the different genetic genes that occur in it. Um, so we can know that with these SNPs, with um, the location and the exploration of these specific SNPs, these variations may explain how you and I uh, experience pain differently and conclusion number two uh, none of these none of the SNPs that we talked about before as I showed before none of them uh, map to domain one and as we said this shows that mutations there will be very harmful to the survival of an organism and SNP number three the structures that we just watched previously are near the binding um, side of the tarantula toxin so this kind of affects how it closes and opens the channel, letting in the sodium ions and they're perceiving pink. Okay, so next steps. Uh, testing this channel with the amino acid variants presented in this research could result in treatments um, that, are, that help those who are actually suffering from pain disorders. And actually these, this channel right here is actually at the moment a, target for um, analgesics, so people, we, they're trying at this moment to kind of find medication and treatments that kind of clo uh, block this channel, so it's an analgesic, it stops the sodium ions from coming in, and then therefore it would me be meant to be treating those who feel extreme pain. So once these channels are blocked or closed, they would feel relief from the amount of pain that they are feeling. So, okay. Okay, so these are my references if you guys want to look at them. And just special thanks to Dr. Gerarda for her assistance throughout my entire research. I really appreciate her and the entire early college program. So, thank you.